Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. Hi friends and welcome to another weekly wrap up. We actually have 11 books to talk about today and I went on a bit of a binge of a certain author and I can't wait to talk about her books with you because they are wild. <laughs> they are wild. Uh, but first off we have a little bit of business to do and then we'll jump into those. So first off I would like to welcome Myrna to my Patreon. Myrna thank you so much for supporting me here. It means so much to me. Some Something I think that I forget to bring up about Patreon if you're not used to it or whatever, I do have free trials available on there. That's something that um, they let us do. So you can actually join at the $7 level for a week for free. Um, that gives you access to all of those exclusive reviews that I've done of stuff and then it can help you decide if it's something you want to stick around for or not, which I think is great. I love the idea of free trials. There's also the option to do the prepay for the year and I believe you save it's like 15 to 20 percent you'd save on a whole year's worth and then you're good to go with that um so those are some options for supporting the channel also i do always have my etsy shop that's open i have some really fun things on there like cute little fabric bookmarks these are so fun i love i love these i love giving those away a lot too there is some kindle size sleeves some indie book size sleeves and there are some XL sleeves that fit your hardbacks as well as some of the large, you know, like they fit the Outlander books and stuff like that. So definitely check those out. Those are ways you can support the channel and still get some goodies for yourself. Right? All right, let us get into my reads for this week. I do have my notes down here. So if you see me looking down, it's because I have notes of like names and details like that so that I don't forget them because that happens to me a lot. <laughs> so the first book that I finished is called Sir Yes Sir by L.L. Ash. This comes out on April 12th and I have been highly anticipating this book. So L.L. Ash is a more little known author but I've been a fan for a few years when I read her book him, which was actually the first book in this series. Now this series is a completely unconnected series. They're not even like interconnected standalones. They don't have any crossover characters. The only thing that is similar is that they are forbidden age gaps in different scenarios. Him is a best friend's dad. Book two is Teach Me and that is a professor and um, student. It is, that one is like forbidden because she is his like TA. Um, but she is, I think she's like 22, so it's not as forbidden like age-wise, right? And then this one that I just read is a dad's best friend, and this one is about uh, Freya and Ashton. So this is called Sir Yes Sir because our hero is a Marine, he's actually a raider, and at the beginning of this book he has gotten injured. Um, he doesn't have any family. Uh, and his best friend for a long time was Tommy, who is Freya's father. So Tom has been out of the military for a while. He owns a um, car dealership and his daughter Freya lives with him and his wife currently, although she is 21, going on 22 and about to graduate from college. Her parents just really like adore her and want to keep her around, but she is kind of itching to get out on her own. And then Ashton ends up coming to stay with him. He doesn't have anywhere to go and it's suggested that he have someone to stay with while he finishes convalescing. He is planning to go back into the Marines and is not quite ready to hear that mixed with his PTSD and his injury that that's not going to be possible. He does have a lot of guilt because his platoon or his his uh, unit was attacked and he was the only survivor and he was the leader of that group so he carries a lot of guilt from that. However, what I will say is that this book really wasn't too much doom and gloom. Like there was a bit of a lightheartedness, not to the point of being like sacrilege for what we've been through. Like we do still have to deal with his PTSD. We still have to deal with those issues. They are important. But there's a lightness between the relationship between Freya and Ashton. I just found to be so much fun fun honestly like some sometimes with forbidden romances they end up being so like heavy and they're more like dark like this was not a dark romance I would say it just is a more like you know 
it's it's still a little bit angsty so he ends up living in the spare bedroom at their house and she and him end up having some late night talks like he'll be up late and can't sleep and she'll bring him snacks and they'll talk and they just have this great camaraderie so they really become friends um, and they also end up working together because she's currently working at her father's um, uh, car dealership and Ashton gets a job there working in the garage part of it. He's a mechanic. He's really good with that stuff. They also end up working on like a rebuild of a car together and just getting to know each other. So once things start to progress and it becomes clear they're both very attracted to each other, things get pretty sticky and uh, her father is not going to react well to that. So I won't say any more because it would spoil it, but I will say that this was just a really good time. Like I said, it, it had some hard hitting things, but it was also very fun in aspects too. Um, this one does have, I will tell you this, it does have a time jump at a certain point. And when the time jump happened, I was super mad. So that's why I'm telling you guys, cause you guys know time jumps are kind of a trigger for me. However, once it had happened and I was seeing where she was going with this story. I understood why we had to have a time jump and I think it was a good, I think it was good to put it in there. Even though when it happened, you want to just like, I want to chuck my Kindle at the wall because I was like, no, why are we doing this? But there was good reasons for it. There really was. So yeah, this was a forbidden age gap. It really was kind of like a friends to lovers for them because you'll see if you read it, like they become really good friends before there's more. And then we also have a military hero and a hidden relationship. So I gave this one four and a half stars. Um, the reason for the little bit of a half star is that I think that we kind of just hung around a little too long. You know, normally I like seeing the couple be happy together, but I think we just kind of hung around too long with a few things at the end and it would have been tighter if we trimmed a little bit. But overall, I still really enjoyed this. So it was a four and a half. It was a four on my spice scale. Trigger warnings for this are PTSD war flashbacks, abusive parent in the past, and a death of a parent in this. Next up, I read an arc of All My Love, which comes out also on the 12th, I think, and this is by Daisy Jane. So you all know I've been reading a lot of Daisy Jane. She comes out in a lot of my kinky videos I've been making lately, and she will continue to because her brand really is like small town romance with kink, like everyday heroes, everyday people with kink. And I love that she does that because y'all know that's my favorite place to see it. I don't always want kink to have to be in a BDSM dungeon in the dark aspect or you know, only involve spanking and calling you a bad girl. Like, I love that stuff. It has its place, but I like that I can find it in more like approachable books so that I can recommend it to you guys and help you find those stories too, you know? <clears throat> so I love, I love that. Um, so All My Love is a age gap pretty big age gap. The heroine is 20. The hero is 38. He's a single dad. His son is five years old. He's divorced. His wife cheated on him and left him for his best friend. And so he's very like hesitant about women. Now his name is Hudson. He is a cowboy. Um, he has a ranch. He uh, is a hardworking man in this small town. And Dolly or Dahlia, Dolly is what she goes by, lives next door with her two sisters and she is Hudson's stalker. She has been in love with him for five years since she was 15 and she has been biding her time until she's old enough that he won't feel like a creep for liking her. <laughs> so she knows that if she made herself known when she was too young, he would, of course, because he's such a good man, just be like icked out by that and feel so bad if he was attracted to her. So she's really like bided her time. That doesn't mean she isn't doing some wackadoodle things, okay? Like this girl is a stalker, like hardcore, like sneak into his room, hide under his bed, um, steals his toothbrushes, <laughs> um, masturbates to the sound of his voice. Like this girl is horny for this man, okay? If you've read any Daisy Jane, you might kind of know like how horny her books are. They really are. So, but even with that being said, this was still a slow burn because once she starts making herself known, Hudson fe does feel bad for being attracted to her. So then he tries to date 
women so that he's like, I need to stop paying, I, you know, because his eye gets caught by his pretty neighbor girl and he's like, I cannot be attracted to a 20 year old. That is not cool. So he starts trying to date women um, and Dolly is not going to have that. So this isn't a dark stalker movie. I know, or <laughs> this isn't a dark stalker romance. It's actually pretty lighthearted. It's a small town romance. And when you meet Dolly, she is such a sweet girl. Like she really is. And she loves Hudson's son. She, you know, wants to be his mama one day. So she really cares about him. Um, she is a artist and a painter. And sometimes the little boy will come in her studio with her and like, she gives him little projects to do while she's painting and everything. Um, and it was just like, she's really sweet with him. But again, she is very horny for Hudson and she is always watching him. She finds ways to be where he is and keeping her eye on him. And when he starts dating a girl, again, she's trying to be patient because she's like, he isn't ready for me yet. I'll just wait until this woman, this woman won't last. It'll be fine. But when this woman starts not being good to the little boy, Dolly is like, okay, uh-uh. I'm not even giving you your time now. Like, no. And a couple of the things she does to get rid of this woman, I don't know, it almost felt like parent trap type of stuff, even though that's like not what this was. Um, but yeah, I was, Dolly is bonkers for him. So this was super wild. It was a little twisted. So the series is going to be called Twisted Sisters. So her two sisters are going to get books as well. And the thing is that um, her sisters know how obsessed she is and they like help her sometimes. Like her one sister will be a lookout when she sneaks in to smell his laundry and lay on his bed while he's gone. Um, so I have a feeling her sisters will be just as wild as she is. So yeah, she definitely is supported by them, which I thought was funny. It is just an interesting choice. So some of the kinks involved in this book, are you ready for these? Like so many, this has squirting. It has masturbating with interesting objects. It has cock warming, like, oh my God, guys, the cock warming in this book. So good. So good. He's a pleasure dom in some situations. There's a breeding kink and there is fisting that happens in this book. <laughs> Wish y'all did not know that that was a thing for me. Did not know, but Dolly and Hudson will make a believer out of you. I'm just saying the scene where this happens, like it lives right free in my brain. I don't care. It does. It does. It does. There is a trigger warning for a child in danger at one point. So this book was absolutely bonkers. It was wild. It isn't going to be for everybody, but if you love kinky things, if you love it crazy, you will love this. And again, um, it is a slow burn, but there's still like sexy things that are happening, just not like between them. You'll see if you read it. There's some dreams that Dolly has, like there's still, there's good stuff. So I did give this one four stars because the story is a little bit, out there, right? It's a little bit wild, but it still was good. I like, I will reread this. I want a copy of this book type of thing, you know? And so, yeah. And it was a five on the spy scale. It really was. It was great. Okay. Next up, I read, um, a Noelle Adams. I've been trying to get through some of her backlist and I actually have a lot of her books as they have been free. Like I will pick them up when they're free or when they're 99 cents. So I have quite a few. And when I need just like a quick book, because a lot of these are like novella length, you know, Noelle Adams doesn't write super long ones. Um, when I need a quick one, I will like snag one of these. So this one is called A Negotiated Marriage. Um, and this one is the first in a the contracted marriage series. There's like five books in this series that all have these marriages by contract going on. So this one is between Luke and Molly, and they have already been married for a few years. Um, they got married for like business reasons. He is a billionaire and he needed a wife so people would stop hounding him. And he also helps like support her business. So that was kind of the trade off. They sleep in their own rooms. There, there is contracted like how, um, many times a month she's supposed to go to events with him and like what, so they really have all the details worked out. Um, part of their deal is that they are allowed to see escorts, but they can't have girlfriends or boyfriends or like, you know, secret lovers they can only see escorts. And Molly, she says she's tried to do that, but 
it just didn't feel right. And, but she assumes Luke does and like, she's okay with it. She's like, he's giving me a lot of things that I want and sex isn't the most important. Now the like impetus for this one is that Luke is wanting sex. Okay. And the way that a lot of Noelle Adams and Claire Kent books work is that there is a lot of miscommunication or like not understanding the other person that goes into these books. There is, I fully understand that. I know it, but the way that she does it is it's like you you understand why they would miscommunicate this because of the fact that like they went into the marriage that it was supposed to be you know contracted right but he comes to her and he says i want to have sex and she's like well aren't you seeing escorts and he's like that's not doing it for me i want something more and she's like well we can't have that like we're not having more with people and he's like i can if it's with you I would like us to start having sex and she's like are you even attracted to me and he's like uh yeah and i think that we could have really good sex together so she's like okay well let's do that um we can have it about like we'll just see how it goes so then being a noelle adams they have like really kind of a first it's not an awkward sex scene but it's that like telling each other what they like that is something she does really well <laughs> in her sex scenes is making them feel so real about like you know, having a good time while having sex, but still not being totally sure of the person, um, as well as once they start to really have more feelings for each other, trying to hide how attracted they are to the other person. I don't know, there's just something about that that like works for me really well. Like it just works for me. So this was a fun time. It wasn't anything special. Of course, eventually their feelings are gonna come out. But again, I just really love her books as quick little, they're very much focused on the trope. Like that's what she's doing with these stories is focusing on the trope and so that's why they're shorter. Um, I actually just bought a series of hers that each book was only $5 for the paperback. Um, and that one is all focusing on best friend's brother trope. So I'm looking forward to reading those. I think that will be fun as well. But for this one, I gave this one four stars. I really liked this one. Um, and it was two and a half on the spice scale. I will talk about another one in the series shortly and I'll explain like why I think when you focus too much on the trope, each book isn't always as good, but we'll get there. All right, next up, I read another Daisy Jane. You'll see, I went between Daisy Jane and Noelle Adams a lot this week. So I want to read some of Daisy's back list, right? Um, maybe I'm wanting to work on a video of her books eventually. We'll see. We'll see. It depends on if I'm liking everything. But again, she goes by like kinky things. She's tried a lot of different kinks. She's written pretty much every kink you can think of. She has like a book for it. And she has a couple that are MMFs, you know, and I've been in a menage mood lately. In March, I read quite a few. Um, and this one is called Release. And it is a older one of hers. And this one started off kind of interesting. So the heroine in this one, her name is Jenity, but she goes by Jen with a G. She goes by Jen um, and then Matthias. And they actually grow up together. They both ha are come from pretty bad families. And so when they're young, I literally think when they're like 13 and 16, they basically are on their own. And so they move in to like this almost abandoned apartment um, and they're taking care of each other. And then as the years go, like things get better, they end up getting a job there, you know, have a bit more money. And when she's 16, Jenity, you know, tells Matias that she loves him. And he's like, I know, like there's nobody else for me but you. And she's like, well, so can't we be boyfriend and girlfriend? And he was like, no, not until you're 18. We can't have any risk that I'll be taken away from you. Um, because if, if people found out that I had you here and we were together that way, like they would be uncomfortable with it. So his, his reasoning is sound. The part of it that's not quite so sound is I was like, who even knows that they live together that like, I wasn't sure, but it's okay. I agree with his reasoning because at that point he's 19, she's 16. You know, I'm not one of those who's going to nitpick that. I personally think that if you're within two or three years when you're both like teenagers, I don't see it as an ick factor, but I can see his point of view of being like that would be inappropriate and if people it could give people a reason to take me away, take you away from me and so he's not wrong about that so then we keep having these chapters like getting closer and closer to that to her being 18 and eventually when she's 18 
they have this, you know, romantic night of like right when the clock strikes 12 of him taking her virginity. It was very beautiful. So, however, then we run into an issue with this. I told you this is an MMF, right? So it was getting a good way into this book. It wasn't a super long one, but I was getting a good way into this book and like they, we weren't introduced to another man yet. So I, I was confused. Well, I'm going to spoil a little something for you because I have to tell you how this happens. Our hero ends up getting taken away and goes to prison. So Matias ends up in prison and he's going to be there for a while for a re like, I won't tell you for why or whatever. We'll keep that. And while he's there, she's still faithfully, she comes to visit him every week. She's trying to count down the time and he sees how like sad and lonely she's being. And so Matias actually encourages her. He's like, it's okay if you want to date someone else while I'm gone. He like gives her that freedom because he's like, I know you'll always be for me but I can't watch you be lonely. I want someone taking care of you, which I thought was an interesting choice to go. Like I was like, where are we going with this? So we get introduced to Silas and her and Silas end up dating. She tells Silas about Matias. Like she tells him about him and is like, I'm just, you know, so that he knows like we'll, we can be together for a while. We can be there for each other, but I do have a true love and this is where he is. And Silas is very intrigued by him and actually asked to meet him. And so she's a little uncomfortable about this or doesn't know how he's going to react. But she does agree she brings Silas to meet Matthias in prison. And these two men actually begin a connection as well. And it's a very interesting dynamic. I don't fully know if I believe it. This is where this will come in for this one. Because basically what... Matthias's mindset is is that this man is taking care of my woman for me and I care about him for that now Silas he's actually been in a menage before he dated a man and a woman before and so he's bisexual but Matthias never has been and there's some implications later that you know I don't know that he's had to fend off stuff in prison which I mean I absolutely believe he's a very pretty good-looking man I believe that but I also was like, so he's just going to be okay with being with him. I don't know. So my main issue with it wasn't that that's where the story went because it was, it was good. This was, this was good. It's that once Matias got out, we were just immediately, it was the three of us. And I was missing more of like, show me how Matias got to this point and show me it happening. So yes, there are MMF scenes. There is an MM scene in here. I felt like we didn't get enough of it. And also this is only from Jenity's point of view. And I feel like I was missing a lot. Now, this was a much earlier book for Daisy Jane. I think if she wrote a story like this now, it would be much different. And she does have some other MMFs. Um, and she even has a couple reverse harems that I might try to see how she does those. So I gave this one three and a half. It was a three on the spice scale. And there are trigger warnings for prison time, like we, like we said. Okay, next up, I had an ALC from Must Love Audio that was called Trust Me by Tiffany Patterson. Never read Tiffany Patterson before, but this was the first book in the uh, Townsend Legacy series, which turns out there are quite a few books by this author that are about the first generation of this family. Um, this one was a billionaire romance. It's an interracial romance. It is a... Um, kind of like a spot, like the heroine is supposed to spy on the hero. She's being forced into doing that. Um, but when he finds out, she's forced into, he forces her to marry him so that he can use her to turn around the spying on the person who's spying on him, um, which was interesting. So this was pretty good. The narration was by Wesley Siobhan and Ryan West. Uh, great narration, loved it. Um, this book is already out now. It was an ALC of a book of a audiobook that's already released and I very much look forward to the next ones. I'm probably going to wait and see if we also get the audio for those, but I would read the next one in the series for sure. Um, this one was pretty hot. Kyle has a dirty mouth. It was Kyle and Riley are the hair are the hero and heroine. Um, there wasn't really any extra kinkies with this. It was just it was good stuff. Liked it. Okay, next up I read book two in the uh lost what is the series called hold on 
The Fallen World book two. I'm annotating this trilogy for one of my patrons. Um, and so I read The Queen of Traitors, and this is about Serenity and Montez. I don't have a ton to say about this. The thing that is tough about this series for me, and this is why when I originally read the series, I was addicted to it. I said this, but things that bug me about it is that in each book, I feel like we start the book at the same place. We start with Serenity hating Montez, and then we make progress with her, you know, getting past like, oh, he's evil, but I love him, but I, he's evil, but I love him, and we get past this, and then like something, he does something and she hates him again. And so we start each book with her hating him and it's exhausting because it feels like their relationship doesn't make any progress because we have to start over every time. And it just, ugh, it was annoying. Um, but in this one, like there, she had been kidnapped at the beginning of this one. He's working to get her back, but the things he does to get her back piss her off. So then she hates him again and it's a hot mess. So Megan, you knew what you're getting into by asking me to read these. I try to be in a good mood when I'm reading these, but I just don't care for Serenity. And like Montez, I like him. I like his evil ways. And I know this is a villain gets the girl story, but I also, when the villain gets the girl, I like the girl to get on board with it faster. I don't need her to try to be holier than thou. We are in a dystopian world. Everything's shit. You have this man who is obsessed with you and loves you. Like, get on board, sister. Get on board. So, this was a three star for me and it's a one and a half on the spice scale. There are trigger warnings for cancer and illness and uh, miscarriage in this one as well. Then there was the release of Mafia Devil by Mila Finelli. So this was a surprise novella that she put out. This book actually fits in between Mafia Target and Mafia Virgin, but it doesn't really matter where you read it but it does make sense to read it after mafia target because we see that couple we see the mm couple in this one because this is also an mm romance and this one is between i don't want to say too much because it is only 100 pages this one is between nikolai who is a bratva he's part of the bratva which we haven't really seen the bratva in this series yet it's been sicilian you know and theo who is a fashion designer um, and Nikolai has to be in the closet because if anyone knew that he liked Dick, he would be in a lot of danger. So he has to keep his liaisons a secret. He has to hide them. It's very dangerous for him. And he gets a load of Theo and he really wants, he really wants a night with him. So he flirts with him. He comes back to his hotel. They have a night together, super sexy. And then Nikolai can't get enough of him. So he invites him for a trip on his yacht. And that is where we end up running into Giulio and Massimo. They end up on this yacht as well. Um, I believe that Theo knows uh, Giulio. He knows him. And so, but Theo doesn't know that Nikolai is part of the Bratva. This is like a secret during the thing. Um, he should know a little better, like just saying. He should have an idea of this rich man, this rich Russian man. He thinks he's just a Russian oligarch. He doesn't think more than that, but even that could be kind of dangerous for you. So this is just their short little story. It was a good time. Um, I gave this one four and a half stars actually because I didn't have any complaints about it. It was a fun time and I can't wait to see what she writes next. I believe she is going to start like a new series. I don't know if it'll still be Mafia. I don't know what she'll do, um, but this was a nice little treat. And if you love that series, you'll like this. It's just a quick little tasty thing. All right, next up, I, I skipped right over a book. I was like, I skipped over a book. So I also read, I knew I read a third Daisy Jane, but this one was a reread. It was an ALC with the author agency. So I reread the only one <clears throat> by Daisy Jane. This one was narrated by Daisy Jane and Aaron Shedlock. This is the third book in the Wrench Kings. And this one is the femdom one. They're both virgins. He is one of the mechanics at the shop. She is the secretary, like the desk person, but she's actually learning to become a mechanic. And so they trade. He's teaching her mechanics things and she's teaching him how to be more sexually confident and it leads to things like chastity cages and pegging and her doming him and it's super sexy so I enjoyed this rereading it it was a four star on the spice scale and a four a four star and a four on the spice scale so lots of sexy things okay 
Then I had read Married by Contract by Noelle Adams. This was the next book in the Contracted Marriage series. So this is where I said that things start to, when they're only focused on trope, start to get a little like repetitive, right? So this one is the same deal. We have a couple who they've already been married for a couple years. Now in this one, they're only gonna be married for five years and she needed a husband to help her get further in the business world because being a single woman was causing her to get like hung up in her career and our hero needed a loan basically. And so she gave him this certain amount of money and they agreed to a five-year marriage where he will come to events with her. He's the private detective and I think the money was to like get his business started. They actually went to school together and he was a soldier for a while. Um, and now he has his like private detective agency starting and he is being her fake husband. Well, her real husband, but only for a limited time. And the same type of thing ends up happening with this one where they decide they want to add sex in. Now for her, she wants it to be very specific that they only have it like once a week and like it helps her relieve her stress because she's getting these tension headaches and apparently having some sex relieves a tension headache. And man, I wish I had that option when I have migraines, right? <laughs> so yeah, but this, oh, I forgot to say too, this is Jen and Nick and her name is spelled like mine, which is great. Jen with two N's and Nick. So this one was okay, but again, it was super repetitive and redundant of the one I had just read. Um, and I'm sure part of that is, is like, I read them within the same week too. So this one I gave three and a half stars and it was a two and a half on the spice scale. All right, then I read a upcoming release. Um, this was Till All the Seas Run Dry by Eliza MacArthur. This one comes out on, is this one out the ninth or the the eighth. This one's out the eighth. So this is out on Monday. This is the second book in her Elements of Pining series, which this is coming after Soft Flannel Hank. Um, this one is about Callum and Marjorie. He is a vampire. She is a silky. And so the start of this book actually overlaps with some Soft Flannel Hank. So we actually see if you've read Soft Flannel Hank, there is a scene where Callum and Marjorie come face to face and they know each other. And we don't know how, but we knew, we know that they knew each other and they both thought the other one was dead. That's what we know from Soft Little Hank. She's very pissed at him. He's shocked that she's alive. That's where we're at with that. Okay. So we pick up with that and then we're going forward from there and we get some flashes to how they first met and that they were actually married many, many years ago and how they both think the other one was dead and they have lived literally over a thousand years thinking the other one is dead. So I don't wanna to say too much more about this one, okay? But a few things that I'll talk about. This is called The Elements of Pining. So like he's pining really hard, but so is she. They're both really pining for each other. She has been missing her seal skin all this time. If you know the legends of the silky, they basically, they can turn into a, a seal or like a mermaid type creature. In this one, it is like she turns into a seal um, and they could shed their skin and then be a human woman on land. And while she was married to him at the time, like, you know, she didn't use her skin. She chose to stay with him on land. And when he thought she was dead, again, I won't spoil how or why or whatever, he took her skin with as a memento to remember her by. He didn't even, he like, he didn't even know the what he was taking. He thought it was just this memento of her that he wanted to keep. So without realizing it, he damned her to never being able to go back to the sea with her family for a thousand years. So you can see why Marjorie is a bit pissed when she meets him again. So they have a second chance romance. There is um, witches and other creatures who are sticking their nose in trying to help these two, which, you know, I just, I love it. I love to see it. It was great. Um, and it is a like slow burn second chance romance for them. So I gave this four stars. It did drag on a bit for me. This wasn't even a super long book, but it just felt that we went over the same arguments quite a bit. But I mean, it is a pining book, so I understand that they can't just like make it work that quick, like I understand. But it also just felt a little bit like drawn out at the same time too. But I still loved it. I think that I still like Soft Lionel Hank more, but at the same time, I found 
that their stubbornness in this one made sense based on their past. Whereas like in Soft Flannel Hank, like Esther got really frustrating trying to protect him at every turn. But Hank was human, so I also understood that. In this one, we have two immortal creatures, so it's a little less like being terrified for the other person. Also, Callum was the person or the vampire that we were afraid of in the first one, and now we know more about him and like what he's like, who he is. And so, there isn't really like a villain in this one the way there was in the first one, so there's that too. So yeah, really enjoyed this. If you liked Soft Flannel Hank, you should definitely read this. Um, you could read this as a standalone. Um, you could. Uh, there is also a setup for the next one there that will have a different mythical creature in it. I won't tell you, but I was getting some hints. And then at the end, when we, it like says what it is, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm excited. So I, you know, three for three with Eliza MacArthur with me so far. I've loved all the things I've read from her. She also wrote Hold Fast, which is that Highlander romance. So I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And then the last book that I finished was another ALC. And this one is also available now if you'd like it. This is called, hold on, is called Rough Score by Kenna King. And this is actually book four in the Hawkeyes hockey series, okay? So with the company that I'm getting these ALCs from, you know, you're not always starting with book one because whatever the narrators for our um, team are working on, you know, that's usually what we get. But this worked fine as a standalone. I wasn't confused at all. And I may pick up the earlier ones because I really enjoyed this. I really did. There is a specific thing I'll get to that brought it down a bit, but I still really liked it. And this was a new to me author and I will definitely read more. Like that's something that's been great about this audio company is if the book sounds good, I grab it because I can read an audiobook pretty quickly. And I've already tried like four new to me authors by using this. So I love it. But anyway, this one is also Marriage of Convenience, <laughs> which really ended up being a theme this week. I didn't even try for it, but this is a Marriage of Convenience. Um, we have a hockey player, Riker, who's the captain of the team, and his visa application was messed up by his agent's assistant, messed it up. And so now he is um, at risk of being deported. And instead of, you know, maybe really asking for help from his team owner, he doesn't want to admit that he fucked up. And he ends up asking this random woman who's an event planner and trying to get a job being an event planner for the Hawkeyes if she will be his, you know, fake bride for two years. Um, because that's how long it will take for his visa to be... Uh, official or whatever so but this ended up being really sweet this was narrated by Tim Page and Addison Barnes really liked that and some things that I loved about this specific arranged marriage is they didn't do they didn't even try the whole like we're not gonna have sex he's like you can't see anyone else and I can't see anyone else so she's like so that means we can't have sex for two years and he's like I didn't say we couldn't have sex you just can't have sex with anyone else <laughs> So they jump right into it, which is great. I loved his family. We get to see his family at one point. Um, and I just thought they were cute. She also has um, a big part of her reason in agreeing as well is that she has a brother who has special needs and there is a spot in a really good like home for him that's going to cost a lot of money. And so she needs this job and she also needs the, a big down payment for this place. And Riker is like, no problem. I will pay it be my wife. I'm happy to take care of this. It's no big deal to me. So that's part of what she's getting out of it as well. So I just really like them. The thing that did bring it down a bit for me was the third act conflict. Okay. It's because I thought I saw what the third act conflict would be. Okay. There was a inkling. I was like, this is what it's going to be. And I was okay. I was like, oh, I'd be okay with it. But then how it actually happened, I wasn't so okay with. And I really didn't like the decisions that our characters made, which I know the author gets to choose whatever they want. I am aware of that, but I don't have to like it. So it did like throw me out like right near the end for a book that I was really loving, but it might not bother some of you. So I gave it four stars. It's a three on the spice scale. And I do highly recommend, like I said, I will probably go back and start at the beginning of the series at some time. Not right now. My schedule's a bit full, but I might be doing that. 
Before I round up this video, I also want to say a big thank you to everyone who purchased annotated books in the pre-order that I did. You guys so helped me towards my tax goal, which I will hopefully be handling this week. I'm still waiting to hear from my accountant and we're getting kind of close to to due date here, but thank you so much. I have all those books ordered now, getting started on them. So if you ordered one of the annotated books, please uh, just know that I appreciate you so much. Like you have no idea. I was so blown away by your guys' excitement and generosity. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, because you missed it, um, every couple months I try to offer annotated books. That is something that is a Patreon exclusive normally. It's for my highest level of Patreon and I only have seven, eight slots available for that. But what I started doing because there was a want for more of them is I started offering these a la carte is what I call it. And so it's basically a one-time purchase of an annotated book and usually I have an offering of books that I've annotated before but this time I offered not just ones I've done before but I offered an option of like you can pick which one it is um, and y'all just blew me away with your generosity and support and you really have helped me hit my goal so if that's something you're interested in who's watching this definitely follow my patreon you can follow at the free level like I said you can do the free trial and see how you like it but I always announce those things to my patreon first and they get the first crack at it because there are a lot of people in my patreon waiting for annotated books that just haven't been able to get them but I do also share it in my um, in my uh, community page so make sure you are following me um, hit that bell so you get notified when I upload and when I have those announcements they go there as well so thank you so much for watching friends it means so much to me and we'll see you in the next video bye